All right, Algebra 1. Good to see you guys again. Um, although, to be honest with you, I really wish I was seeing you guys. Um, things are still a little different talking in front of a camera, but uh, doing the best job that we can here. And hopefully these videos are helping you guys out a little bit. Um, and then anything else that I post. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about, uh, Ed Puzzle. I was getting a lot of emails about that today. Um, and uh, I'm filming this video prior to section four actually needing to be assigned, but uh, just wanted to give you some information. Things that relate to Ed Puzzle, uh, it's just extra exposure for you guys. So what I'm really wanting you to do is watch those videos, do the best you can answering those questions, but you're not going to be graded down if you miss those questions, okay? So you can go back and re-watch any of those Ed Puzzle videos that are assigned to you. Of course, you can re-watch any video that I do up here, um, pause, rewind, fast forward, do all that stuff that's going to help you. And so, again, with that Ed Puzzle stuff, I have to see, though, that you have fully watched the video. When I log into Ed Puzzle, I can see how much of the video you have seen. And when it comes again to those questions, do the best you can. You can go back, rewatch it, re-answer it, but you're not graded down for missing the questions. You simply have to watch the full video on Ed Puzzle, then go back into Google Classroom and make sure that you hit turned in or submit. I notice sometimes it might say uh, there is no attachment, so what are you submitting? And you'll just hit maybe resubmit or say mark is done. All of those potential things could help in showing that you've watched the video on Ed Puzzle and you have turned it in via Google Classroom. Okay, so we'll get that out of the way. Um, also want to let you guys know one more announcement here that I am getting your prayer requests and I'm praying for those immediately once I get those. Um, and I'm keeping them in my email so that it's a reminder to me to go back and continue to pray for you guys that way. So please feel free to send me those prayer requests. All right, so what we're looking at today is section four, and it is called Solve Quadratic Equations by Graphing. And then, actually, nope, we are not going to solve them by graphing. We're going to try factoring instead. Trust me, guys, I've looked through these types of problems, even looking in through them with Algebra 2. Graphing is not a very precise method to solve, so really factoring is going to be the quickest, easiest way to show how many potential answers and what those answers would be. Something else for you guys is whenever they say solve, another word for that is they could say what are the roots. So if they say what are the roots, that's also their way of saying, hey, solve this. What are the answers for x? Where does the graph cross the x-axis? is otherwise known as a root, okay? All right, so factoring review, I wanna make sure that you guys remember how to do that. So I'm gonna be putting another Ed Puzzle review video. In that video, it's actually gonna be written up by Khan through Khan Academy, but my voice is dubbed over the video. So we'll see how you guys like that. All right, uh, some problems, by the way, cannot be factored. So if that's the case, you get a problem and you're saying, I don't get it, why isn't it working? It could be because it's not meant to work, meaning that you'll have no solution, okay? So that's something to be aware of. Now, for some of you guys, that doesn't mean that just because it didn't work the first time doesn't mean that immediately you say it's no solution. You still need to fully exhaust your effort put into factoring that problem to see if it truly is no solution, okay? So that being said, you may have problems with two answers, meaning two numbers, or just one number, or again, no solution, where it cannot be factored, okay? So I've put three examples up here on the board, and so we're gonna work all three of these out, and you're gonna see all three of these will give you examples for problems that could be two answer, one answer, or no solution answers. All right, so let's work this first one out. You're gonna see x squared, minus 6x plus 8. And so remember the signs that you have here. If we're looking at a plus sign at the end, that tells us that in the parentheses, the signs are going to be the same. Now, what will those signs be? Look to the first sign. They're both going to be negative. Okay. Take a look at the x squared. That breaks down into x and x. And then we're looking for factors of 8 
that when we add them together would create 6. So if you had 1 and 8, that doesn't work. If you had 2 and 4, that does work. So it's going to be 2 and it's going to be 4. Because a negative 2 and a negative 4, when you add them, make a negative 6. But a negative 2 and a negative 4, when you multiply them, make a positive 8. So we know that that does work. Then what we're going to do is from here, we're going to set them both equal to 0. x minus 2 equals 0. x minus 4 equals 0. And just solve these out. So you're going to get 2 and you're going to get 4. So this one right here would be an example where you have two answers. They are 2 and they are 4. Okay. Another way of saying that is that the roots of this problem are 2 and 4. That's where they would cross the x-axis. All right, let's take a look at the second example. The original problem is x squared plus x equals negative 1. <clears throat> You'll see that I've already shown the error. That negative 1 needs to be brought over, and so this is what it's going to convert to, x squared plus x plus 1. All right, so both of these signs in here are plus, which means both of these signs in here are plus inside the parentheses. The x squared, remember, that breaks down into the first position of each binomial. So x in one, x in the other. And then the only factors of one are one and one. Great, so let's put that here. You may think, great, you're done. However, double check your work. What is 1 plus 1? It's 2. What's my middle term? My middle term is 1. 1 plus 1 does not equal 1. 1 times 1 equals 1. That's great. But it does not equal 1 when you're adding them. So this one right here is a perfect example of no solution. Because 1 plus 1, again, it equals 2. It does not equal 1. And that is not what we were asking for. So if you double check your work, just because you think that's the only way this binomial and this binomial can look, does not mean that it actually creates the trinomial, the original problem, up above it. So no solution for that one. All right? Let's take a look at example 3 over here. So again, the original problem, negative x squared plus 6x minus 9. Again, I showed you that arrow. The first step is to bring that 9 over, create the trinomial right here, negative x squared plus 6x minus 9. There's another step that you have to take. I circled that negative sign to show you that you want to factor out that negative. You remember when we were doing these types of problems back in chapter 9, factoring out that negative sign that was with the first term, otherwise known as the a value in front. Got to factor that out. That's going to change the sign of everything. Okay, so that negative is gone. That's why this is a positive. That positive changed to a negative, and that negative changed to a positive. So every sign within that trinomial has now changed. All right, now we're ready to break this down. One thing I forgot to write there. That negative 1 should still be on the outside, so don't forget that. All right, take a look here. you got a plus sign, which means the signs in the parentheses will be the same. Which sign will that be? Take a look at the first. That's what they'll be, negatives each. x squared, break it down here with an x and another x. And then factors of 9 that can create 6 when you add them together. You should easily pick out that that's going to be 3 and 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. So put those 3's in there. Now, what you should see is they're identical. All right, That tells you something. You didn't do anything wrong, but it does tell you something. Each of these, when you solve them for 0, are going to be the same answer. So in other words, x minus 3 equals 0. What do you get? You get 3. You're going to get that same thing for both binomials. This is a one answer example. So the answer simply for this one is just 3, or the root is 3. That's where it would cross the x-axis if you were to graph it. All right? Okay, thank you guys. Uh, hopefully this is a little bit helpful here. I'll kind of move off to the side. If you need to copy that down, pause the video, do whatever you guys got to do to help benefit you the most. All right? Love you guys. Miss you guys. Hope you're doing all right.